Let's go. Three. Go ahead. Three, uh, da, 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 da. three, two, one. Boom. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Persuasion by the Pint. Jonathan Taylor here, along with Sean Oso oh, McCool. Oh, so McCool. I love yeah, that. I'm, you like that? I'm testing that out as a, kind of a stage name. I think that's a winner. What do you think, audience? There yeah. we go. I yeah. figure since, you know, made up stuff is working right now in marketing, <laughs> I would just make up a middle name. <laughs> so I know, which is a great tie. It's a great lead in, Sean. I love that since yeah. we're making up stuff. Uh, yeah. So we're going to be talking about some some stuff in the news lately. We're going to pile on the hate. How about that? <laughs> Pile on the hate. No, we're we're gonna try to look at this a little objectively. Like, sure. How did this guy? And we'll reveal who we're talking about. Well, the title is in there, but if you're just listening, so we're gonna be talking about the Liver King. How did this guy go from come out of nowhere and in one year just take over the fitness social media kind of niche mm -hmm. um, and blow up? And then all of a sudden, we find out that maybe what? he's not quite on the up and up. <laughs> which a lot and, of people have saying the whole time right you know, that well, yeah. he finally the evidence had finally come out so yeah so uh kind of the rise and and where we're at with the we don't know if it's a fall yet that's what's interesting i remember this happened with uh jay shetty a year or two ago mm -hmm. in the personal development space and he was caught using other people's words word for word yeah. in his videos like taking Brian Tracy's speech and like mm -hmm. memorizing it and putting it or teleprompter or however he did it. He claims wow. his team did it, not himself. Um, got to throw your team under the bus. Right. <laughs> so, but that hasn't like Jay Shetty's still around. Like it yeah. uh, hasn't seemed to hurt him that much. So yeah. it'll be interesting to see how this plays out with the liver King. If you don't know yeah. who the liver King is, uh, let me throw up our <laughs> image here. That's right. uh, so this is the liver king. Brian Johnson is his real name. Mm -hmm. um, you can see why with a name like that, he just decided to go with something a little fancier, I guess. Liver king. Um, if, you want, he, if you're on Instagram or you uh, follow anything on, if you get on TikTok at all, you, he's all yeah. over the place. I mean, this guy's just been a social media phenomenon. Yeah, he's been year. he's made his round on the on podcasts and everything. Yeah. Like he's been everywhere on podcasts as well. If you're anywhere in the personal development, fitness space, yeah. he's made it on a lot of those shows. Mm -hmm. uh, he's been called out by Joe Rogan several times. Like, yes. Yep. I think Which, Joe yeah. Rogan's the one that really got a lot of that. Yeah, he's wrong. Going. This guy's on roids. There's no yeah. doubt about it. So. Um, and, and, you know, if you're not... The thing that I that kind of seem to come from this is like, if, you're, if you really understand fitness and bodybuilding in particular you knew he was on steroids. Oh, absolutely. If you, you were kind of like a that. novice and you just, <laughs> you know, you worked out and you were, you're impressed by big people. Like right. then you, you didn't really think about it or you maybe believed him that it was just all ancestral. Sure. So his big thing is he's got these nine ancestral principles that mm -hmm. if you follow them, you can look like him. Yeah. That's basically his pitch. Sure. Um, and it's basically carnivore diet. Mm -hmm. exercise, lift heavy stuff. I mean, that kind of thing. Eat raw meat, raw meat, not just meat, not cooked meat, raw liver, yeah, raw testicles. <laughs> yeah. Raw organs. <laughs> organs. Um, yeah. All that stuff. So, yeah, but yeah, the, it's fascinating how quickly he went from zero mm -hmm. to yeah. where he is now, which is, yeah. you know, 1.7 million Instagram followers, just amazing numbers in a year. Right. And what's crazy is he's like following, he did exactly what the guru marketers told him to do. To do. Yeah. Like if you read the books, yep. they say, be an attractive character, mm -hmm. take a stance. Like he yep. did all those things that he was Absolutely. supposed to do. Yep. He just also didn't quite tell the whole truth. Right. <laughs> And it finally, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It finally came. So I think there's a lot of lessons that we can learn from him on what he did right. Mm hmm. Like he went all in on his character. Oh, absolutely. 
probably that's actually what got him in trouble is because he was so tied to the character and so intent on making this character larger than life Mm -hmm. that he bended his own rules. He broke his own rules. Yep. Um, And in fact, I, you know, he, his claim was he did all this naturally, all this naturally. And he denied steroid use on podcast after podcast after podcast Mm -hmm. with some people who probably know, knew he was lying. Yeah. Uh, Like he was on Mark smelly bells podcast, which is a, you know, strength guy um and what happened was eventually eventually somebody did a video um and this is the email that was leaked and it basically said it it was an emission of liver king buying eleven thousand dollars eleven thousand dollars a month a month worth of of steroids yeah um you know peds man Loading up, so loading up. Not 11, to mention, I think of those abs, those fake abs he's got. I, I think he <laughs> probably, I was like one one of those abs was like twenty grand or something like that. You know, um, yeah, because those aren't real. You know, yeah. I think he yeah. actually admitted that he didn't admit the performance enhancing, but uh, he did admit to uh, having surgical implants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And now on his Instagram page, the very first pinned video is his apology. And he's yes. basically saying, I messed up, but it's, you know, it's one of those things like the apology came after the evidence. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's he didn't come clean and right. say, you know, before I get caught, let me just go ahead and say, I've been lying. Like mm-hmm. he, he waited till afterwards. Right. Which is yep. when most apologies happen after you get caught, yeah. I guess. So, um, but yeah, Look you know, he that. does these like big, you know, he, he walks around carrying a sled everywhere he goes. He doesn't ever wear a shirt, even on a podcast interviews inside of a building. Yep. Like, you know, he's all in on the character, which that alone, like taking that really super dogmatic mm-hmm. stance, finding the enemies, having a having a core thing that you stand for, like it all worked. Yeah. Like it worked brilliantly. Um, and Reminds- I don't think he would have needed to be even as big as he is. Yeah. For that to work. No, absolutely not. No, no. It he reminds did. me of the, what is the book that we talked about, about, um, you know, having a, uh, taking on a persona. What's that book again that we talked about? You had recommended it to me about. Oh yeah. The, the, um, alter ego. Alter ego. Yeah. Yeah. He, he literally, I mean, that was, I mean, he perfected He became, that. he became yeah. that guy. He didn't just put on the alter ego temporarily. He like Mm-mm. he's it was he his became, life. Yeah, he lived like a, it like a good method actor. He just got all in on the character, right? And I think it overtook. I mean, it just it it overtook it. But like I said, so, you just didn't need it. There's another guy, mm-hmm. um, Carnivore MD. He was on um, Liver King was on the Carnivore MD's podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he, even he asked directly, like, you doing steroids? And the guy was like, no. But Carnivore MD, you know, yeah. he looks a little bit more, like, reasonable as far as, I mean, he's fit. He's shredded. Sure. But, he's but he not looks like, like, he's like, yeah, I think I, you know, you can kind of see, like, yeah, I could probably attain that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, yeah, and, that's it's basically the sa- and it's basically the same message. Yeah. And this guy's doing okay, too. Like, you know, mm-hmm. he's got his own supplement line. He's doing these things. Um, so no, it goes to show that you, you could probably do it without going to those extremes, but you know, he did go to those extremes and he got caught. Yeah. And I think he had to find his own, like, there's people like, like you just, you know, you just pulled up. He had to have his own kind of, you know, unique take, whereas Mm -hmm. that guy's lean and trim and looks healthy. Yeah. Yeah. But he had to offer a different perspective of you know, massively bulk guy. Yeah. Um, you know, that, that used this and did not use any PEDs. I yeah. And you think about natural. it, like, like you get caught up in it, even as a consumer, you kind of get caught up in it. You know, you're like, yeah. like I was never attracted to, to this particular brand. Neither was I, but I was fascinated. It's kind of like a, like yeah. watching a car wreck. You know? Yeah. I was like, well, I can't believe that many people are following <laughs> this guy, but okay, whatever. <laughs> Um, cause when I see this, especially at, at our age, Jonathan, like, right. I know that that's unsustainable. Like I'm exactly. not carrying, I'm not carrying that physique 
yeah. into my 60s and 70s. I just right. know it's not going to happen. I'm old enough now to know that. So I'm like, give me the lean version. Give me a mm -hmm. fit. Give me mobility. Sure. Give me those kind of things over muscles at this point. Yeah. Um, I don't want to be the other end. I don't want to be fat and out of shape either. Right. But I want to be healthy enough where I can throw on a ruck and I can do, you know, 25, 50 miles if I had to, you know, uh, you know, but yeah, I don't need to pull a sled full of weights. I don't need to look that ripped and that lean, you know, 12, 10, 12% body fat. Mm -hmm. Like that's just, it's very, very difficult to sustain. Yeah, it is. And, and I don't care and, what your diet is. No, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, um, and it's, it's fascinating from a lifestyle standpoint. Um, you know, like you said, how much he embraced, you know, just not from a, just a, a diet standpoint, but just from a, how he lived, you know, walking through his house, showing, showing, you know, he had videos where he'd walk through people, walk through his house, show people where he slept, which was, didn't have a mattress. It was just on a uh, hard, um, you know, a, his bed was like basically hard two by fours and, yeah. you know, with a very minimal sheet underneath. Now, you know, and not, now not all much comfort. Of and now all that's in question, right? Because because once you find out that absolutely, like, so now people yeah. are going to really start digging. Yeah, because you know how the internet is; like they're going to exactly. find out. You know, if you lied about this, what else? What else is not true? Yeah, and <laughs> and now like, you know, what podcast is going to have him on? Like, yeah, they're going to be very you know, a lot more careful and like yeah. all these things. Um, right, right. Ironically, I, I would not be surprised if now Joe Rogan has him on because he's like. I think this would be a perfect time for Joe Rogan to have him yeah. on. And like yeah. really say, what were you thinking, buddy? Exactly. Dude, exactly. what were you thinking? Why would you do that to people? Because the whole, I think the whole reason Joe Rogan didn't have him on is just because he kept denying. He didn't, yeah, he didn't believe it. Yeah. So. Yeah. So. But I, yeah. but I think you're right. Like he did a lot of things right from a marketing mm -hmm. standpoint. And I don't think, I don't think we can just overlook that since we're a show about persuasion and marketing and sales. Right. Like he did a lot of things right. And he could, and it, What's crazy is the steroids weren't needed to make mm -hmm. this happen. Yep. He was doing enough other things right and taking those stances that he could, probably could have just stayed there. Absolutely. Um, so, so what, first of all, so let's talk about the good. Yeah. And then we'll talk about, we'll offer some uh, other comparisons to, and I'll, I'll bring up a book that, he, you know, Dan Kennedy, um, we've referenced time and time again, or previously on the show, but one of them is the story of Do uh, Dr. John Brinkley, who was this was in the, the Cures time. book? Is that the book this was in? Yeah, it's the book. If you haven't read the book, the book's called Making Them Believe. Yes. How one of America's legendary rogues marketed the goat testicle solution and made millions. Yeah. So this is a doctor back in the 1920s. And it's obviously the liver king read that book. <laughs> here yeah i mean here's the truth is i mean people are the same as they were back a hundred years ago they want to believe right? they what's, want to what, believe what's the x files they want to believe right they want yeah exactly exactly so people are can be as gullible uh today as they were and we have the internet i mean where should be right i mean that's kind of a uh i'm being a little sarcastic there yeah. but um but you know it's crazy. The, the, for for those of you who don't know the story, Doctor John Brinkley, uh, at one time one of the he was one of the wealthiest doctors, undeniably the most Barnum esque promoter in in terms of medicine in his time. Vilified, prosecuted as a quack, but also praised as a saint by a, a number of people. You know, so at, you know, as much as he was knocked and called a quack at the same time people believed no matter what you know again going back to the fact that people want to believe um but fascinating book if you haven't checked it out the book uh really digs into the marketing principles to that provide kind of the blueprint for basically what liver king and all of these people have done um i'm sure that this was probably on the reading list or probably one of the things that he studied um, to get where he was in terms of, uh, along with a lot of other books. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I think of, you know, Russell Brunson's book, um, the first book in the secrets series, yep. um, talks about 
creating an attractive character and all the points, you know, that the liver King went through. Yep. He followed that book to the T like, and it worked like he's got mm -hmm. endorsement deals. He's got supplement brands. He's got, <clears throat> he's making sales. He's making money, you know? Yeah. Um, it'll be interesting to see if the hundred million dollar claims are still true. Yeah. Uh, like I have a lot of doubt about those. Yep. Um, you know, I, I think obviously people can do that, but it'll be interesting to see if, if those numbers are quite on the up and up is what, sure. Is what they, you know, you thought they might've been before. Uh, mm -hmm. cause, cause if he's lying about steroid use, <laughs> like I yeah. said, now you question everything. Right. And I actually went on his Instagram profile to, uh, to see if he dropped a significant number of followers. And as of right now, he has not lost enough followers. I mean, it's still at 1.7 million. Um, his apology video got 129,000 likes. Mm -hmm. Um, so interesting to some of the comments too, because it goes into yeah. that commitment, you know, go back to Chidini's commitment and consistency and what we talked about on the previous episode, people yeah, if committed. You, if you put your life behind this guy and you like endorse this guy, and you shared his posts and all these things, you, you kind of got to stick by him. Initially you have to stay, stay yeah. the course. Now over time, you know, that can yeah, erode, people, but yeah. Do yeah. people kind of drift away? Kind of like right. Lance Armstrong, right? I mean, Lance yeah. Armstrong, same story, right? He, he was this character and he won these races and he's like, no, no, I'd never used no, never, right. never, never. Oh yeah. I did that a couple of times, <laughs> like every time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah. Like the first, one of the first comments on here is like, I mean, some of these guys I follow, like, um, that are making comments, it's like proud of you, brother. I yeah. think most people, myself included, knew you were on some sort of home hormone or testosterone <laughs> balance therapy. Sure. Hiding it in line wasn't necessary because it really doesn't change the message you spread around the world. Right. So there's people, here's another one. He owned it. Massive respect. Yeah. Um, owned it after the fact that he was busted. <laughs> after he was caught, he owned it. <laughs> um, you know, when the email with his address on it and his, you know, showed up, he owned it. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Um, Everyone knew you took subs, bro. It's not a big deal. Mm. It is a big deal. It is, yeah. Because yeah, you erode exactly. trust in the entire brand. Um, right. Another one, I stand with the king. Yeah. Um, long live the liver king. Like, yeah. it's crazy how I'm people not. just continue to to follow. And and the kind of the same thing is true for Jay Shetty with even with all the stuff he got caught doing. And right. Um, it's so. And then and then we have other people. <laughs> they get canceled and you never hear from them again. So it's like, right. what makes the difference? Like, absolutely. That's, yeah. I have no idea. I'm asking the question, like what makes the difference between those people that get canceled and, and lose all their followers and sponsors and everything else. And then there's mm -hmm. the people like this who get caught. Yeah. Bold face lie mm -hmm. over and over and over and people still follow them. Well, this is pretty fresh. So we don't yeah. know the, you know, we don't we'll know see. how long, yeah, we'll see the, the we'll see the results, but I'm interested from your perspective, Sean. Let's talk about this from our own, um, just our own perspectives of what we think okay. really drove people to really, uh, you know, follow this guy. Because I have my own take of like, you know, obviously, you know, there's a lot of things that he did right. There's a lot yeah. of things that he was uh, he used from. I'm sure that you know all the you know, all the advice and everything that he read and studied on creating this huge following in such a short time. I mean, he's obviously been listening to this podcast. I mean, yeah, exactly. Clear, the, like, you got to start here. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> but what is from your perspective, what do you, what is the first thing that comes to mind that you say, this guy was spot on and this is a huge reason why he had such a huge following. Well, he, he created a character. I think yes. that's the first thing he created yep. this bigger than life character, mm -hmm. um, which in a noisy world, it does stand out. Sure. And he went all in on the character. You know, if mm -hmm. we think we've talked before on this show about Matthew Lesko and the, and the money suit, and we've yep. talked about, you know, people like that who have, I mean, I've got a friend, you know, that I used to work with, uh, Rudy Maurer that mm -hmm. I helped run his agency. Right. You know, he's, he's kind of rebranded himself over the last few months and into this next year. And he's gone like all red, like every 
picture you see of him, everything he's wearing red clothes, red shoes, like nice. He's created a uniform for himself, for his company. All his people wear yeah. red and they have uniforms basically. Love it. Yeah. And so like he's got red suits, he's got red casual clothes, he's got but everything he's got is that Rudy red, you know? Mm -hmm. So he's going all in on this character. Um and if, if that's that's what works is is that that attractive character, not just visually, but also in the fact that he, he has these nine tenants and he, mm -hmm. he, that's everything goes through those nine tenants. Sure. Yeah. And, and he invested heavily into his character. I mean, like I said, you know, buy those abs were not cheap. I mean, yeah. And that was, those were paid for, right? I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> that was then, like buying like, and the know, fact is he, you know, even if you're doing steroids, you still got to go to the gym. You still right. got to keep that up. Right. Right. That, I mean, yes, it helps tremendously, but like you still got to pump the weight. You still got to do the, the things. You still got to do a video every day or two videos Absolutely. a day. You still got to make the podcast rounds, right. travel all over the world doing podcasts. Like he put in the time, he put in the effort, he found a character, he found a, a mission mm -hmm. um, that people could, could get behind. He, you know, he, he found a, a trend in carnivore diet. That people were really on to. Yep. Um, oh, that's a good, that's a good point. You know, so, you know, we talk about like meet people not the where only they're one. already like they're, con you know, meet people where they're already having a conversation. Right. You know, don't like, yeah, he's by no means this, the only one saying this stuff. Exactly. There's plenty of people talking ancestral right. lifestyle and have been. So he, he came out into that. He tapped yes. into it. He didn't have to persuade people to change their thinking in any way. What he did was, you know, that's he another, just, he just took it up a notch. Yeah. He did like with his look and his right. workouts and you know, all the different things. And he, he codified it with his nine tenants and they were super mm -hmm. simple. Yeah. Um, even the, the graphics he used for him were like very primal looking. Yeah. That's another thing. He invented his own language, primals, sub primals. Hello, and know? he, and he called his, he even had a term for his followers. Hello, primals. You know, yeah. that's what, that was their term. And if you weren't doing this, you were a subprimal. Right. Right. Yep. So you're, that's those, right. those were the outsiders. Those are the people. Those are, it's a subprimal. Like me, exactly. That's that so good. Jelly beans and Oreos. Labeling. Labeling. Yeah. Labeling. You just yeah, label us people. versus them. <laughs> and create, and you create this. And that's what the, uh, kind of the video that blew all this open. Sure. Yeah. Um, what he talked about, he's like, he had this perfect, you know, in and out language, like you either in the group of primals or you're out. Yeah. Right. You know, you're, you're like the scrawny kid on the outside. That's right. You know, and, and right now, like there's a lot of bulk is in like, yep. you know, exactly. I don't know how long this, this physique lasts, mm -hmm. but you know, for the last five or six years, this kind of bulking and, up. and this whole alpha lifestyle is coming yes. back in like yeah. you know being the alpha because you know we've been beat down by you know obviously i think it's just it's just part of today's modern media where uh you know we tune into it's 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 kind of like put people in a beta format yeah <laughs> so many males uh so that you know what's what's the obvious pushback is you know people promoting the alpha you know, the yeah. alpha male, and you've yeah. seen all of these products out there, alpha, you know, I see alpha this and alpha that, you know, yeah. in terms of marketing, you know, and people get just, you know, they lock right into it. Um, it's kind of like the, it reminds me of the old saying, like, what is it like 95% of people believe they're above average. Sure. Yeah. And nobody <laughs> thinks they're average and, and certainly nobody thinks they're below average. That's right. Yeah. Like everybody thinks they're alpha. Right. You know, or, or more yeah. people think they're alpha than there could possibly be alphas. Sure. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, he did a lot of things, right. He, he hopped on a trend that was already active. He, mm -hmm. he created a character. He took a stand, um, and had a, had a formula basically with the nine tenants. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, his, his, his profile on Instagram says CEO of the ancestral lifestyle, nine tenants, one mission. Mm -hmm. He's got one core mission, um, to put back in what the modern world left out. Right. So you know, very like, very easy to, to kind of consume and follow. Mm -hmm. um, and it's entertaining. Like here's a guy like chomping on a giant piece of liver, you know, or yeah. just 
or I mean, bone look marrow. At some of his, he's got a giant <laughs> hawk or falcon or something that he's <laughs> like, that's pretty cool. And he wears this crazy headpiece, you know, animal skin yeah, headpiece. That's right. Yeah. Shows up on every podcast with no shirt, no shoes. Sure. Yeah. You know, it's like, he, he almost, it's almost like a WWE character. Yeah. Like it, it doesn't yep. even seem real. And yep. now we find out it's not. <laughs> so that's right. That's right. Um, and I always like when I see these, I, I, I like wonder, like, I wonder what he's actually like at home, you know, when he's not in front of a, a camera, video yeah. or otherwise. Yeah. Um, I mean, he bought a tank, right? It's like, <laughs> come on. Like, <laughs> It's, it's insane, <laughs> but mad respect because he did go all in and he just, he, he kept up in it. Um, he did. Yeah. Really the only, and like some of the comments said, you didn't need to be that jacked and that ripped to mm -hmm. make the same point. Sure. Yeah. Like you didn't need the steroids to make the same point. Could have but we did, would he have exploded if he hadn't? Have? I mean, that's I the question. Yeah. yeah we don't, like, and we'll never know. Right. Like we'll never know. So because a character is so important, you know, in in your you know the character of your story and um you know just being different as much as you can you know yeah. how do you how do you set your own um how do you create your own story how do you create that you know yeah. unique one of a kind story do you know, you know be jacked you know yeah. be jacked and eat bone marrow and <laughs> raw liver yeah. you know, everybody else is doing ancestral like you know yeah you can cook your meat it's not a problem to cook your meat a little bit. Yeah. Nah. Nah. <laughs> it's a waste of time. <laughs> just, yeah, you just rip right into that liver raw, man. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what else to say about that. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, here's the thing in uh, entertainment, obviously, very entertaining. Yes. Entertainment is such a key part in attracting, you know, followers. And I think he was really good at that. You know, yeah, content, religious, you know, putting out content on a regular basis, just relentless about getting, you know, clips out him, you know, like you, you were showing earlier him with a Sherman tank, him lifting weights, him pulling a car, him yeah. uh, in an ice bath full of big, huge, massive blocks of ice, you know, pe while people are shoveling, you know, his kids are shoveling, you know, more ice into the, 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 the little pool. I mean, it's funny, you know, it's yeah. entertaining. So, uh, you know, as he's yelling out more like a caveman, you know, it's like, okay, this is, this is kind of funny, you know, it's kind of funny. So it's different. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's, and it worked. Yeah. And um, you live and you live that. So, you know, the, the takeaway is, from my standpoint and i i need to find if i can post i'm I'm gonna look and see if i can find some of these old brinkley clips because they're fascinating um some of his old radio shows and talking about just the um <laughs> it's 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 almost it's almost silly to think about it today when you hear some of these radio these old radio ads sean i don't know if you've had a chance to listen but it, it's just hilarious that people get uh, drawn into this, but talking about, you know, you know, goat testicles were a, a viable solution for people with, you know, let's just put it simply, you know, some ED problems out there. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> that was his solution. The, the, uh, you know, and he, he literally got away with this and people paid, you know, a lot of money for his, his solution, but which was more or less just snake wall, you know, back in the day, but, um, you know, eventually got shut down and, you know, caught up with him very similar to, to this, but, uh, yeah, there's actually, a um, on national geographic, there's a, there's a documentary mm -hmm. on, on, the, on, uh, John Brinkley. So mm. I'll send you that link, but oh, good. Should put that on the show put notes. That in the show notes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, although that's a subscriber thing, so maybe not I have to find a different one because now it's not letting me go. So here's some things that, um, in the book, if you haven't checked it out, uh, he talks about the blueprint for using media, which was okay. fascinating. I mean, none of this is new. I mean, just, it's just the format for which you use back yep. in the day. It was radio. Um, today it's social media. 
um, the Brinkley prescription for virtually unlimited uh, price elasticity. Talking about how he priced his products, which is fascinating. Um, his secret for being admired as a means of attracting customers, especially eager to do business with you. I mean, you can get a lot of, there's a lot of good takeaways from this book. So, yeah. And the thing is you can take, it doesn't matter what it is. People are going to take, if it, if there's a tactic that works, some people are going to use it ethically. Some people are going to use it unethically. Mm -hmm. And that's what's happened here. Like the liver King took good, timeless marketing principles. Yep. But then he went a little too far. He got caught up in his own press. And yep. I think he, he just kind of like, I think there's probably some, I mean, if I want to get into psychotherapy, like there's probably some issues of self-worth <laughs> that he was dealing with that he felt like the only way. I have my own thoughts on that, but yeah, I won't yeah, say. You know, like, <laughs> like, it's like, oh, uh, the only way people are going to love me if I look bigger and bigger and stronger than everybody else in the yeah, world. Right. Right. You know? Um, and that's just not the case. Like the fact is he could have just his nine tenants were enough that he probably could have mm -hmm. run off of that. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting to see how this unfolds, but the fact is a lot of this stuff, if you were to do it, if you were to come up with a character, it, that's what people want. They want this kind of bigger than life character. Yeah. And by the way, it doesn't have to necessarily be alpha. Like you could have a very timid character. But if you play the character right, it'll attract the people that you want to attract. Right. We right. We've talked in the past about Columbo. Like nobody would consider Columbo an alpha. No, no. But, but he, he was. He's a. It was he's a great a, character. He's a relatable liked. character, and people like. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Even Matthew Lesko, I wouldn't consider him like an alpha type leader. Mm -mm. He was this geeky guy. Yeah. You know that had these secrets to get free money from the government. Like. Right. Of course you want to know about that, right? I want my money right. back from the government. Like he right. just found exactly. a good niche and a good place yep. to use this character. Um, yeah. Skinny dude that wore suits with question marks. I mean, kind of like the Riddler, you know, dollar like, bills. Do that's right. Dollar bills. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's, um, it's, and you know, our friend, uh, Tim Davis with his paintball jacket. Yeah. I don't know if he's still doing that, but personal branding, he talks about this. He'd be a, he'd be a good guy to talk to this, uh, yep. about, with this uh, idea of around the liver king. Yep. So yeah, it's fascinating how quickly you can go from zero to hero and we'll see what happens from hero to whatever, but it looks yeah. like he's going to be fine from the first initial reaction. He'll have enough fans. Yeah. Uh, it'll be interesting though. See if some of these brands, the, his brands will obviously be okay. Well, he's got investors too, to worry about too. I yeah, mean, that's another, invest, that's another, that's yeah, another, they start pulling out and, and yeah. doing their due diligence they're going to be like yeah you know what yeah. else is going on there's a lot of money i mean tied to all of this and faith and and trust but you know seth godin or seth godin i don't know how, how he pronounces it wrote a book many years ago called all marketers are the original title was all marketers are liars yeah. but you know he actually he scrubbed that i think after the first printing and went to all marketers or storytellers. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was like a little too honest. <laughs> he was he was being a little too too forthright, too honest for sure. Um, yeah. Got a little pushback on that, I guess. And and so he, I think he actually it actually xed out the liars and then put storytellers. So he kind of had but the little bit of both. But um, there's yeah, a lot if of you truth actually read, that. Book, he wasn't saying that people are liars it was no, more no, no, it was more their story it was more like that's that's how a lot of people see them but right. the fact is they're whatever you know so yeah yeah it's yeah man it'll be interesting to see how this how this liver king thing shakes out but yeah. uh I, I have no idea like yeah. i feel bad for the guy actually i mean he brought it on himself but yeah like this is a, this is a try. This is going to be a tough six months or a year mm -hmm. for him to yeah, see how I think he, so. Because even the contacts you made over the last year, mm -hmm. you know, with podcast guests and hosts and things like that, sure, you just burned every one of those bridges, right? Right. And they're not going to have you on again, or maybe if they do, you know, some of them will because they'll want to take in on the like we're doing. I mean, hey, let's be honest, we pick this topic because it'll 
rate well on social media and on sure on the Google rankings and things mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. And I think there's some lessons to learn here. Absolutely. There's going to be plenty of other people who want to capitalize on his flame out if that's mm -hmm. what happens. So right. there'll be some people that have him back on their podcast. Um, and it, I think what will be interesting too, Sean, is how he tweaks his met. If he does tweak his message now that people know he does performance enhancing drugs, how do you, or does he get off those and, and, and how does yeah. he redefine his physique? Cause that physique right. is going to change. Absolutely. If he gets off or yeah. does he embrace it and say, okay, well you can do this. I don't know how he could um, though be in that public. <laughs> I mean, you're basically using. If you're spending eleven thousand dollars a month, uh, you're going to no see some. Yeah, I mean, you're no you're longer relatable some... to a lot of people, like, right? Because it's not the meat; it's eleven thousand. Like, if right. it was eleven thousand dollars worth of meat, even that's like yeah. unsustainable. Like, right. nobody can eat eleven thousand dollars worth of meat. But now we're talking yeah. about mm -hmm. illegal drugs in a lot of cases. I don't. I don't know. I've never used steroids, so I don't know how hard or easy these things are to get. Like this mm -hmm. list of stuff, like IGF one, CG, CGC, mm -hmm. um, Ibu, Femorin, <laughs> Omnitrope, Test yep. Cycle, Deca, something, Winstraw. Like, are these legal? Not legal? I don't know. Um, but that's the list of stuff that he was taking, and yeah, it's just. It's crazy. It yeah. says my doctor told me that I could double it in an effort to get in the upper 200s, low 300s. Yeah, so he had a doctor advising him on this. That's the other thing. If, like, if you're going to pull this kind of scam, <laughs> like, you better make sure that your, your key people that you're buying from and emailing sure. yeah. are bought off, that they're not going to. Oh, yeah. Because at some point, they're going to see the opportunity to rat you out. Yep. Is more yeah, valuable. They want some money. Keeping you yeah, as a customer. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, there's always people that are willing to tell the tell the tell. Yeah. If if they're feeling left out or not, you know, not making the money, not getting some of that money. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> They've got some secrets to share. So, which is what happened. I mean, basically, a guy that he, uh, I think, a guy that worked out, a, a, a pretty well known, I guess, a, a known bodybuilder. Yeah, uh, spilled the beans on him from yep. some, uh, I guess some, some conversation they had going, I guess via text or chat or whatever. So, yep. So yeah, good stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, we just kind of wanted to throw that out, obviously for content, but also just some examples of, uh, you know, you know, some takeaways. I, you know, how he got to where he, you know, he is, but also, you know, how do you handle that? How do you handle that? You know, the controversy, uh, obviously, you know, doing what he did was a little different. Um, yep. but if you read the book and I'll mention this, we'll post it on the show page, uh, the book, making them believe, um, and it's by Dan Kennedy. So it's a great book, Dan Kennedy and uh, Chip Kessler back in the day. Uh, I think it's like, they published it back in 2010 or something like that, but fantastic read. Yeah. And uh, you'll get the idea. Um, and like we said, there's, you can take these principles and use them ethically. Yep. Um, just don't get so wrapped up in your character that you cross, begin crossing the line just to keep the character alive. Yep. That's yeah. the, the key takeaway here. I think is, is just keep the integrity in, in check. Yeah. You can still have fun. You can still go over the top. Like we know hyperbole works. We've talked about that on a, on an episode mm -hmm. a long time ago. Yeah. Like hyperbole works like mm -hmm. going over the top, being bigger than life, all that stuff works and it's fine. And people often know you're doing it. Um, but you can't say you're not doing something when you are doing it and then expect that you'll never get caught. Yep. So absolutely. I mean, even as, I mean, it's crazy. I was, I was watching some of the clips and I was like, I was looking for like some of the signs, like body language or stuff that he was lying. And like, he, he owned it. Like, he was like, I am not taking them. And like, yeah, he didn't flinch. He looked the, the other get the podcast host, like right in the eye. And he's like, I am not taking steroids. I am not taking important performance. He even came up with a, a, uh, cliche for PEDs. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot what it was, but it was his own. 
Yeah, it was like own, uh, description. Yeah, something per execution, and I don't know what it was, but he came <laughs> up with three words for PED. So he like, all he said, "Yes, I am on PEDs," but he he gave it a he gave a it his definition. own definition. Yeah, exactly, which is just brilliant. I mean, that's exactly <laughs> you know, um, but then it turned out not to be true. So that's. Yeah. That's yeah. where it goes. So, so this will be a fun case over the next, you know, two to three months. Mm -hmm. yeah. See what happens. Does he lose a lot of, you know, a lot of people on Instagram don't unfollow. Yeah. But it'll be no, interesting. Because they want to follow the wreck. They want to yeah. follow the train wreck. But what will be interesting is, is to see the engagement. Does yeah. the engagement stay high or does it drop right. off? My guess is he won't lose that many followers, but his mm -hmm. engagement will just drop to nothing. Probably so. Yeah. Because I, I don't know, 129,000 people like in 18,000 comments on his apology. And a lot of the yeah. apology was a lot of the comments on the apology are actually positive, which surprised me. Absolutely. Well, it goes back. People buy in. People are consistent. They're going to yeah, ride the ship. I guess ride that's the Titanic. The <laughs> I guess that's the difference when you're following somebody for like this type of advice, as mm -hmm. opposed to if you're following somebody yeah. like a celebrity, that's more entertainment and things like that, you're more likely to abandon ship on the entertainment mm -hmm. person than if you're following somebody for like, yeah, to make your life better or whatever. Sure. Yeah. A guru. We'll just say guru for the, to right. say it. it's, yeah. it's harder to, it's harder to turn away from that because of the consistency and the commitment. I think that it is being more of a casual follower of yeah. a celebrity. Right. Yeah. So, that guru status is hard to maintain. Yeah. You know, if you're, if you're not ethical, um, in this day and age, people will find you out. It's just so easy. Yeah, for sure. There's too many it's, avenues. Uh, yeah. It reminds me of a, a, a coach friend of mine t one time mentioned like, so like, the best thing you can do is you can have on your website, like on your about page, just, go ahead and put all your failures right out in front. <laughs> and he, and he used the, yeah. you remember an eight mile with Eminem? Oh yeah, absolutely. The final rap scene yep. where he just said everything about himself first before the other guy could use it against him. Sure. And the guy had nothing left. Like, yeah, nothing. You know? Yeah. So he and took think, the high ground. I mean, that was kind of the high ground maneuver. And yeah. So it's like, standpoint. It, you know, politicians should do this when they announce they're, they're running mm -hmm. for office. They should say, all right, I've slept with 36 women. I've, I've embezzled $436 million. Right. Like, right. Uh, but I'm over that now. I, I see how easy the system is to manipulate. So I want to set things straight. Right. And you're like, wow, that's, that's cool. Yeah. And it's kind of what, you know, it's kind of what Trump, I was watching a, I think it was Dave Chappelle. Mm -hmm. and he was talking about Trump. Mm -hmm. When Trump came out originally and said, I'm running yeah. for president. Yep. And in the, in the debate, against Hillary, he was like, um, Hillary was like, you don't pay any taxes. He's like, that's right. Cause I'm smart. <laughs> and he's like, he, and he basically just admitted, yes, I use the taxes. And yes. I that's do this. Right. Yes. I do that. Which, and everybody yeah. was like, Oh crap. <laughs> like, that's what I want to do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're like, Oh, here's a guy who's admitting <laughs> that the system is broken. Yeah. And it's so broken. It allowed right. him to become a billionaire. Yeah. Yeah. Cause and they're it, like, that's and it, it added all kinds of credibility for him. And, Absolutely. Yeah. You know, so I think there's ways to use it. And because and, there's a man working against the system, you know, he's trying to. And, and what you know, better way to, to say, I know how to work against the system because I use the system to get ahead. Absolutely. Yeah. Which like, is what in, deep down inside everybody, all of us would love to do. You know, mm -hmm. no one loves to be taxed. I mean, yeah, if we had right. the if we had the guts and the the right accountant, we'd be doing the same thing, right? right. It's like, yep. yeah, of course. Yep. So yeah, we'll keep an eye on this, you know, moving forward as yep. uh, kind of as the podcast. We'll, we'll keep an eye on this, um, but it is amazing how resilient some of these figures can be. Mm -hmm. uh, so it'd be just interesting to follow that. And uh, always, yeah. I don't know. We'll see. I think it's entertaining. Yeah, if he goes in and just. And, and he just, if he can be okay with himself, not looking the way he looks right now, yeah. I think he'll be fine. Right. Question is, will he kind of have the, will he lose his confidence if he loses that, if he starts losing that physique? Will yeah, he that's be okay my with, question. Will he will, be, yeah. yeah. Will, he, will, he, will be, he be okay with himself? Right. 
that's when it'll fall apart. Yeah. But as long as he can stay confident, yep. he'll have a crowd that follows him around. Yep. Should be fun. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll have to follow up on this and, uh, within a couple of months and see what the aftermath is. This is yeah. kind of all fresh. So, uh, yeah, but it's good for search engines. That's why we're here talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> we're manipulating the search engine. Damn it. We were expecting people to comment more about this. Uh, I know we've got some watchers, but damn it. You people need to be commenting. I mean, gosh. Yeah. We had a couple, uh, more porn sites offered us <laughs> comments, but that's I, not I what we're looking for. I blocked those that's already. Way. Yeah, exactly. So exactly. let's, we don't need those so in real Liberty. time. Um, <laughs> I was seeing if we were showing up on in real time yet, but yeah. not, there's going to be a lot of people talking about this. So we'll see yeah. Um, what happens, but yeah, it's, I mean, literally like articles are coming out as we speak. Like, so we started this episode 45 minutes ago and I had done mm -hmm. a Google search and now right. Rolling Stone now has an article out thir 36 minutes ago, Insider an hour ago, Buzzfeed 52 minutes ago, Bon Appetit an hour ago, wow. uh, New York Post an hour ago. So he's getting some serious press. Yep. You know, what's the old saying? No bad, no news is bad news. Absolutely. PR. No, yeah. um, we'll see if he can harness and turn this into a win. Possibly. I think I think if there's a couple big podcasts that he could get on, like Rogan, maybe some of the night shows, mm -hmm. and he could kind of plead his case. And I think he's got enough smarts, and he's he's good enough, and he's very charismatic on on video. Sure, yeah. And I think that will take him a long way. I'm always reminded in these cases, and we'll wrap up with this. To me, one of the most underrated videos. Are, are underrated movies that apply to our time that was made a long time ago mm -hmm. is natural born killers. Ah, you remember that with Woody Harrelson? I do. And I do. Yeah. Who was it? Juliet Louis Dreyfus. Is that mm -hmm. no? Is that what was her name? No, that wasn't her. It was, um, I can't remember her name, but anyway, yeah. um, was not, but that show was all about just the fanatical following. Mm hmm. And that was before social media. I think that came out in the nineties. Yep. But it was basically social media and press following around these, these killers mm -hmm. who got more and more popular, the more they did their stuff. Right. And they were literally killing people, but they got mm -hmm. super popular. And I'm like, yeah. we're so close to that right now. Sure. Yeah. That like, I think 20, 30 years ago, he'd be liver King would be dead. Like he'd be done. He'd be wiped off. Like nobody pay attention. But these days, I don't know. It could go either way. Yeah, it really could. And yeah. I think it, I think it's, I think it really comes down to how, if he does own it, granted it was after the fact, but most people aren't really going to pay, pay attention to that. Mm -hmm. He's going to get more eyes than ever. Yeah. Right. I, I bet his, I bet searches for liver King. We'll have to look at that, you know, a month from now, like what, what are the searches for liver King mm -hmm. before and after? And you know, it's going to be higher after. Sure. And then see where it, where it goes. So, uh, yeah, it'll be fun to, we'll, we'll make that a, we'll be a regular segment. Well, we'll definitely controversy, you're right, Sean. Controversy is, is, is something that is a sales machine today. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, any kept, kind of controversy people are attracted to. So, yeah. you know, it goes back to that old saying, as you mentioned earlier, you know, there's no, no there's no sorts of, yeah, such, it, bad publicity is 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 nothing. Yeah, there's no such thing as bad press. Yeah, bad press, exactly. So we'll see if that's true. <clears throat> right. Right now it's it's it is true for Kanye. Like Kanye yeah. West is not doing well with press. Ex exactly. There's a there's a good uh that's a good opposite approach because yeah. he's completely burned <laughs> his bridge. Yeah. Um he he's go he's digging further down. Yeah. <laughs> So that's so be interesting to watch these two things happening kind of at the same time. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. like I said, the Liver King has a much more loyal following than I think it's somebody like a Kanye has. Mm -hmm. Kanye is much more entertainment based. Right. Liver King has been much more like this is how I want to live my life based. Sure. From his followers. And like you right. said, the commitment and consistency on that 
is much mm-hmm. higher than I'm following this guy because I like his music or whatever. Right. You right. know, so absolutely, it's, it's easier to pull away from that and go find another rapper to listen to than it is maybe to yep. just be like, oh, all the stuff. Um, so yeah. And keep up, you know, keep in mind always, you're, you're always tapping into the conversation people are already having. So again, you know, he's, he's built a business off of what people are already interested in. So I, that's why I think that, you know, people will continue to, they'll probably show some loyalty there because yeah. that's, it's a, it goes beyond what he, you know, as a person is all about. It's about what people are interested in and that movement towards, mm-hmm. you know, that carnivore type, uh, Livy, excuse me. <laughs> yeah. Bless Let's you. Get that out. Um, that carnivore diet, that living, yeah. you know, people are into that, the alpha, um, mindset, that alpha living lifestyle. You know, he could probably, if he, if, if it really got sticky for him and he just couldn't shake the steroid thing, there's probably, yeah. well, there's without a doubt, some people in his following that could step up and take over the company and the liver King brand. Right. Uh, and carry it forward. Like, so I don't think the brand is completely damaged forever. No. The question is, is he going to remain the face of the brand or not? Bingo. That'll be the, that'll be the question. Right. Um, Right before we go, uh, thanks to Brent Pritchard listening on the old YouTubes. Thanks Brent. He said, keep up the great work. (laughs) Guys are both interested and interesting. A great combo, just like persuasion and pints. Brent must be a copywriter because that's a pretty good. (laughs) I like that's that. A, that's a pretty good comment right there. Yeah, that sounds like a copywriter would say yeah. something like that. So, uh, way to yeah. tie it back. Persuasion, pint, tie it all together. That's right. Good job, that's Brent. Right. Um, Thanks for the shout out, Brent. And um, Sean, that's fun, man. That's yeah. that's a wrap. A, a good conversation. We'll, uh, cir- I'm not going to say circle back. That sounds so cliche. <laughs> um, but we will revisit this at a uh, later episode. Maybe when the synergy is right. That's right. Exactly. (laughs) As it stands, we have, um, I think we have like maybe 12 episodes until we hit the 300 mark. I don't know if we're going to hit that before uh, the end of the year. Now, I'm thinking maybe if we do a couple of episodes. Yeah, if we do a couple of episodes from now until the end of the year, we still are not going to hit that. But we will be hitting that sometime in January. So Okay. You know, no rush. So. I think we have another comment here. Yeah, if you want uh, some chat bots or some uh, <laughs> marketing to ch- get your channel, Affy Skysberg with no profile picture, that's not a red flag. Um, <laughs> would, would love to help you out. So, Yeah. We must be reaching something on, on the old YouTubes because now it's like we're starting to get... Uh, that's from... Uh... That's from Twitch. Oh, is that from Twitch? Ignore it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The purple ignore that from there. Twitch. Yeah. So go to right. do- dogehype.com. So there you go. Get a free Doge coin with every <laughs> comment. We may have to ignore Twitch from here on out. I'm not sure how, how viable Twitch is for, uh, for our platform. For we'll see. But uh, Sean, it's been fun, man. I hope you all have a great weekend. We, we're going to have a fun weekend. We got a little uh, SEC championship going tomorrow with our Georgia Bulldogs. Heck yeah. Uh, we've uh, alienated probably um, like 90% of the country right now as we speak. But, uh, <laughs> hey, we love those dogs. And yeah. we are going to have a crazy beatdown over LSU tomorrow. And then we will advance to the playoff where we will easily whip everybody in that tournament. Yeah, we'll take out TCU first. <laughs> Put them back in to all you Michigan fans, I know there's a bunch of you out there that listen. Y'all Michigan Wolverine fans, we're coming for you. Yes. And it's going to be a repeat of last year in the Orange Bowl, but this time it's going to be out in California, and we're going to put the beat down on you. There so, you go. I like it. Calling your you. shot. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Calling your shot. Good, good there you go. There you go. To all of our listeners, thanks for listening. Persuasionbythepint.com. You can find us on all your platforms, Stitcher Radio, iHeart, Spotify. You name it, you can follow us. Uh, Sean, it's been fun, man. We'll see you all next week. See ya. Awesome.